Yeah. Yeah. So, you Good. so it's again the marketing message on it. Yeah. And the reason that works, it's like the National Lottery. Have you noticed theirs these days? Mm. Who, win, oh, yeah. who wins if you win? Mm. Or oh, I think is the tagline, who wins if you play? Yeah. Oh my God, beautiful. Now I have to play. What really is going on? If I ever felt guilty about playing, now I don't. Mm. Now I don't. Now I can play for the rest of my life and I can shot another 20 quid on every Friday on that lucky dip because if I play, somebody else wins. Oh my God, that is just the most, when I saw it, I was pissing myself laughing with hysteria at the number of additional pounds that will be spent on that fucking thing every week because my external justification is that, well, if I gamble away the fortune, it was all for the sake of a good cause that somebody else in the family will benefit if I win. Why did you gamble away our fortune, Paul? I just wanted to, I just wanted to give you something if I won. Well, that's all right, but we're homeless. <laughs> I like the one where they've got like Piers Morgan and Jordan and things like that. And she's like, oh, I wanted to have like a two hour sanctuary in his garden. And they're like, oh, please don't. Anyone, if anyone wins it, don't let him win it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Better problems yeah. to have. It's, yeah. it's resentment. It's, um, I taught this, it's boot camp. It's all back, you know, in San Diego. It's all back to that thing. I resent the fact that that sod has that type of life. And if he wins it, that means I'm not. And if I don't play, he's got a shot of winning. Therefore, I have to play it to stop him winning. <laughs> and now this is complicated as hell. And it's like all based upon emotion. Even though I haven't got the money and I promised myself I'd stop gambling, I'm going to do it anyway. Because my Auntie Mary, I've divided up in my head who's getting the money and where it's going. Even though the statistics of me winning are actually going down because more people are playing. <laughs> Think about it. One of the top three things we absolutely nailed this year, wow experience, communication, back-end care, visibility, understanding what we do and understanding yeah, core values, realigning expectations, good. So part four, getting clear on why we're not where we want to be. So what went wrong this year? What went wrong? What do we think went wrong? Are we breaking off again? Yeah, let's break it off. What? Let's look at the three second, second and third questions. Give three examples of how we can improve any aspect of the business group. No, I think what went wrong? Nothing went wrong this year. It can always be better, but I don't think anything went specifically wrong. We identified, I picked up on it in about August, that the difference this year was going to be basically one company, which it was. It was on medical. It was one company that really changed the level of referrals that they'd sent to us, which was on medical from the year before and the year before that. So the more I looked at it that then, even at the time when I knew it was happening, when we started really getting dialed in on, on the, the numbers and the power of the numbers was that, that, that was back in August when I picked it up and I believe I mentioned it to you two there, back there and then that we're probably going to actually, I think back then I actually said, we're going to have a, we're going to be in the hole for about 40, 45, 50 grand this year. And, it's, and then I went and looked at on medicals referrals compared to last year, and it was about 40 to 50 grand. So it's literally one company. So have we done anything wrong? No. Now, what is supposed to happen is we um, are aware of it and there's a gap and we start to go, right, how can we fill the gap? What else can we do? What other sources can we get? Then it was like, well, we haven't got the recruitment um, of the physio, obviously we were caught, stuck, whatever in, in that situation. And it got to a point where it was like, okay, I'm happy to accept it because I don't think we'll be able to um, do that much about it anyway. I've got other things going on. We're still very happy with the business's development. And I just made a call to go, I'm good. I'll, I'll have to accept the consequence of, of that situation. But what was important was we were aware of it and I could have changed it if I wanted back in, back in August. There's always a first and second order consequence of everything. That if I put my energy and time into that, I'm gonna lose it somewhere else. So we didn't need to do that. But that doesn't mean that there aren't in second question, give three examples of how we can improve any aspect of the business. So there we go, group exercise. 
Just, just on that, when you say I, I could have changed it in August, so like change, would change it what, like sort of get onto them and say, can we have some more people? Or what, what would yeah, you, you build, we build relationships because it is possible to get more of those referrals. You just have to drop the price significantly. And that's basically what's going on. It's a race to the bottom with medical agencies. It's like, who'll just do it for the cheapest? When Vicky first arrived, to give you all an understanding, there's a company called Tix Medical and Speed Med and, um, and, and Non Medical. They were probably, between the two companies, pumping into this business about 20 grand a month. It was ridiculous what we used Minimum. Yeah. Eight to 10 grand a month each, minimum. Every month, on point for a year, and a year and a half. The entire business was built upon it. Um, in the beginning, it was vulnerable as hell. So to let you know to this day, ticks, 400 quid, well, do we even get referrals? Okay. Nothing, yeah. right? Yeah. Gone. It went within about a year and a half. And on medical, went from about eight at one point to zero for about two and a half years. Then it came back to about eight, and now it's back down to what, three, four? I don't know what it is. Currently. Three to four. It's about three to four. So that swing, that shift, right? There's not that much I can do about it. All we can do is um, nurture the relationship. It's having that phone call every week or every other week to go, are you happy, are we doing all right? Somebody else is coming around here and going, I'll go cheaper. That's it. Or they've looked at it and de-risked their business, which is a good thing for them to do, is they've gone, well, we can't rely upon one provider. We have to have four or five, because if something happens to Paul's business, we're screwed. Why wouldn't they do that? But the more that we get on the phone to them and everything all right, you're happy with what we do. And the more that we create a gulf between the relationship that we build with them, that we do give a shit and we get on the phone and goes, anything you want, anything we need, or you need, anything your clients are telling us, you that they're not telling us that we can improve, the more likelihood that we are top of mind that we get more of the referrals. The other scenarios are that somebody's come in and gone, I'll do it for 23, uh, and then they've rang us up and gone, can you do it for 23? And we've gone, no. We can't physically, because the only person that can do them is the head physio. And th there's a point where you go, we can't justify doing that, because every time he does one of those sessions, we lose one of those other at significantly <laughs> higher prices. So that's, that's why we made a judgment call and gone, yeah, could we have got more medical agencies? Yes. Because we used to have, like, as I say, it used to be something I have set up um, and the rapport I had yeah. with everyone, but we obviously changed the focus of where we wanted the business at that moment in time. But getting back on, inviting them to the clinic, come and see our premises, it was that kind of thing, we'd meet up with people and... But we couldn't fulfill. So because it was, we would have had to, and you always are having to, to, to manage between them dropping their prices and you still being able to justify doing it because I play the long-term game, which is if the customer comes through the door, I want to turn them into cash pay patients or their friends and family into cash pay patients, mm -hmm. which is the only way I can justify the fees. Wouldn't pay the coffee. It's like, it, there's no profit in it but it's the chance of an upsell, it's the chance of them coming back as privates and it's the chance of their friends and family coming through the door. That the level of service and experience that we offer lends itself to them wanting to come back as private patients. These guys around the corner don't think like that, but there's also that short-term consequence that if I do let them come in for so cheap, it means that A, we won't get paid for three, four, five, six months and then we're saying no to private patients because we can't get them in who want to pay three times the price. So that's why I had to go I'm going to have to let this one ride for three months. What's most important was that I was aware of it and I, as the business owner, made the decision. I didn't do what nine out of 10 business owners, in fact, 99 out of 100 business owners do, is sit down in, in April and go, after the year's ended, what, what the hell happened? Why didn't you tell me? Why, why didn't we start getting on the phone? It's like, there's no point getting on the phone because we've got nowhere to put them. We've got other things to fight solving spreadsheets and creating dashboards and systemizing and having staff come on board. We were bringing in a new member of staff as well. Anyway, there's only so much that you can do. And if you've seen it as a five year project or a 10 or 15, 20 year project, it becomes a lot easier. Make sense? <coughs> so that, that, does that answer that question? Yeah, yeah. It was just more than that, like method, like and see how the change there's a method in all of the madness that I do and, and I don't play most of the games that most business owners do because I think over a 5, 10, 15, 20 year period and always have they think day to day they think just another name on the sheet <laughs> they think they'll get paid next week and so on and so on whereas I'm looking at how if I make that move in, it's almost chess if I make that move there what, where does that leave us open at the other end and often um, I'll make slower decisions that are painful in the short term, but are much better in the long, in the long term. In that, um, 
because of the found, sound financial footing that the business is on, I can play that. I can play the short term game and lose a little bit of money in the short term, but have a much more solid, robust business that lasts a lot longer than the company around the corner who are literally in a race to the bottom, who will not have moved on, improved, changed, done anything other than that, now having to work significantly harder to get the same level of revenue that they were making five years ago. Make sense? So, um, three examples then, as you break off into groups, three examples of how we can improve any aspect of the business. So, I firmly believe how you do anything is how you do everything in life. Everything. Nothing is exempt from it. How you think in one situation is how you think in the next. How you behave in one situation when something is not quite your uh, in your favour, when you feel as though you've been hard done by at work, at home, in life, in kids, in whatever, you react the same way. You are not exempt in any way, shape or form. Your brain is not sophisticated enough to do it, to react differently in different situations. So, a lot of people's problems come from the fact that this didn't work, so I'll try selling that. This house didn't make us happy, so we will buy a bigger one. This, I, I used to argue with Natalie all the time, right? And I still do, regularly, about all <laughs> sorts of shit. I won't go into that. <laughs> right, and we always will. And one of the things that we argued about, pre-having the house that we've got. Now, for the record, I'm not materialistic. I don't give a shit about where I live. I live in a very nice house, right, right now. But it doesn't mean anything. And I, I like it, don't get me wrong, and I'm not disrespectful to what I have. But it isn't, and never was, and wouldn't be the goal, the thing that I dream about at night. I'm not waking up every morning, and never was, never will. I'm just not that way inclined. Sometimes I wish I was. I'm not gonna deny that I don't like it, and I don't enjoy it, I do. But I don't, and didn't go to bed dreaming about getting it when I got it. So I didn't make a big song and dance about it. I'm not really, it is what it is. And Natalie will attest to it that I could happily live in a two bed flat. And in fact, if I wasn't with her, I probably would be living in a two bed flat, living at work till 10 o'clock at night, going back, sleeping, getting back up and go to work. That would be my life if I didn't have kids because I'm fully committed to the fulfillment that I get from the job, from what I do on a daily basis. Now, side tangent, most people's problems away from work happen usually because they're not fulfilled in what they do. And they expect that just because they've got a job or just because they've got a career, they will find instant fulfillment. You don't. You have to find fulfillment in it. In it. It does not come to you, which is why people jump career, jump ship, jump job, jump house, jump boyfriends, jump girlfriend, whatever it'll be. So we take the same habit, the same way of looking at the problem, the problem of the way of thinking that got us into the problem, into the next situation. Hartlepool is not very good, so I'll move to New Zealand. Everything will be all right in New Zealand. No, it won't. It might just be a bit sunnier for a couple of months. That's it. You will still live with the same internal strife and conflict that you lived with in Hartlepool. You will just be warmer doing it. You will pass palm trees on the morning. That's it. After a while, you're so wrapped up in the shit that you're living with that you don't even notice the damn palm trees. That's the reality of life. You take wherever it is with you. So back to the story about Natalie, and I'll come back to this point. My argument used to be with Natalie, and still is to a certain point, that when we lived in a certain smaller house or whatever we were renting at the time while we were looking, she never would clean it, right? And she'd blah, oh, well, it's not my house, so I don't want to do whatever. I'm like, that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. You either thoroughly love doing it and you will do it anyway, regardless of whether or not it's your home or not your home. It's a habit, it's a ritual, it's a thing that you get pleasure from. It's a feeling, it's a sense of pride, it's a sense of just being in a house that doesn't have jeans on the floor or whatever. It's not a thing that you do just because you own the home. That's what you're telling yourself, but I can guarantee you, when we get the bigger house or we get the whatever, just because it's a bigger house, you will not all of a sudden start the habit. You can't, you just don't, you, your body can't do that. Has it? <laughs> Is it fuck? <laughs> Molly Maids. <Mertz. laughs> Whatever gets to the point. Now, is, is it better? Yes. Is it the thing that was promised two years ago that when I buy the house that she promises to do whatever? Is it shite? <laughs> Am I remotely 
bothered? No, because I'm 100% acutely aware that it was never going to change. I was not led down the Mary garden dance of everything will be all right. I knew it wouldn't, but I pandered to the, okay, and it never will be until something happens that she realizes that that's what she wants to do and that's what she values. So what's more, and I have to respect that as the person that chose to live with her. Did I either accept that or I don't. That's it, there's nothing in between. I'm not gonna force it to change. She doesn't know how to change herself. I ain't gonna be the one to change her. I can change me and I can change the way I look at it and I can giggle and laugh and go, that's the person I'm with, that's it. Simple as, and, and the, her version of that is with me, of all of different interactions. So back to the point, how you sell anything is how you sell everything. And Vicky's point, and I agree with it, is that we still have a nil orthotics. We are still not selling out weekly and monthly plans of care or a year of care. We are still not selling out as many, we are significantly better by the way, of upsells on the back end. But I still think we need to be better at selling what we currently have. Because no matter what we bring in, the fantasy is that a new product will solve everything, and it won't. A better process and system, and a better way of selling the current products will solve the current problem. And then once we've nailed that, opens the floodgates to sell other products. The yeah, process in the system- It's more the broad and open the floodgates kind of idea, you get the the, the net rather and get more people to sell to rather than sell to what you why is that why is apple so successful <coughs> it, it sells a few products and, <laughs> and condenses everything <laughs> yeah. serious it's the po i i know where you're going and yet the most successful company on earth with the smallest market share in its field is the richest company in the world ever. More than every government combined has more money in the bank because it basically sells a small number of products with one or two options for each one for every line item. You either buy a black one and a white one or a 500 songs or a thousand songs. This one or the 13 inch one. There might be, there might be a third version occasionally of something. But more often than not, if I want a laptop, I pick the laptop, the 15 inch and it's either 260 gig or 50 or, or whatever, and that's it. You go on Dell's site, holy shit, 52 pages of different laptops. Screw that, I'll go back to Apple and pay twice as much. Not because Apple's better, because they made it easy for me to buy. And they also made it, and this is the bit that the world overlooks, there's a reason that the geniuses when you go in are so knowledge based. Why? They don't have so much of them. <laughs> there, you, there you go. There you go, in a nutshell. A cause and effect. When I was in Orlando in December, there was a queue, right? Went in to get, uh, we queued for two and a half hours to see Sandra, right? So, at the corner of my eye, I see this queue start to evolve. Bearing in mind the shop's done up until 11, we're in a 10, you can get in before for a Starbucks and that's about it and see Sandra. I see this queue building, I'm like, what the fuck's that? Like, what the, I know it's Christmas, but like, what's going on? In fact, it was still only, when was I in Orlando? November, it was only early November. So it wasn't like, you know, weekend before Christmas. Queue's building out the door. What, what the fuck, like what is going on? So my curiosity is now raised and I start to look. It's the Apple store. It's half 10 and there's a queue around the bloody mall to get in the Apple store, right? It doesn't even open for another half an hour. People have gone in early to queue to get in the damn store on a Sunday. It's not like there was a big product launch going on or anything. It was just a Sunday. Holy shit, like what does this company do and how does it do it? Out of curiosity, I walked past the Microsoft store. So it's 10 past 11. There's now a security guard on the front letting people in because it's that busy, it's only been open 10 minutes. There's like one in, one out mentality with a, a rope to get in. Walk past the Microsoft store, same time, six people in it. How? Sells the same laptops, sells phones, sells iPads, tab tablets, the equivalent. How? What people haven't picked up on with Apple is they've made it sens sensationally easy to be successful. In that the one thing that the customer cannot do is make decisions. Mm. You and I do not know how to buy anything. We like to think that we do, but we fumble our way through life, buying shit that we didn't need, didn't want, regret buying, wish we'd found the receipt earlier, wish we hadn't gone to the shops <laughs> that day to get it, and so on and so on. And we will spend our entire life doing it. Next time, I won't make that mistake. But you Online, do. I'll definitely do my research. No, you won't. Next time I go to the shops, I'll only spend 150. No, you won't. We, don't, we do not know how to do it. 
So the company that is the richest in the world with more money in the bank than, more, uh, than the United States government, not difficult to do these days, but more than any other business in the world, period, that it lends money to people, it's that successful, has narrowed down its options to be sold to for two reasons. A, that the customer can choose confidently, cannot get a purchase decision wrong, but the most important one that everybody overlooks is that the geniuses can become geniuses because they only have to study 10 products. They don't need to know much more than that. So I go into the Microsoft store and it's, well, I'm relatively interested in this laptop. Which one? Well, that, that one. What's the, what's the difference between this one and that one? If there's 52 products, their ability to explain away the difference in the products is almost impossible. If it's that one's fast and that one's a bit faster, it's easy for me to understand. I bought these Beats headphones at the weekend, right? And I should do a video on this. And I went in and there was two. There was the solos and there was the studios, right? And I just said, what, what's the difference? She went, well, that's studio quality and that's like run of the mill quality. She went, if you like your bass and you like your music and you want it in its most professional sound that you can possibly get, get the bass. All right, we'll get the bass. That's it. That's all she said. But if there had been 15 different versions of the headphones, it became a straight decision between like, okay. She, and she said, they're, they're good, like they're fine. But if you really value the quality of your music, and you like to listen to music and you like bass and you can appreciate noise cancellation. Why do I want the damn things anywhere? Because I spend however much of my life on airplanes where kids scream behind me when I'm trying to listen to a podcast. Therefore, having noise cancellation in my headphones is beneficial. Made it very easy for me to buy. Now, what would have complicated the damn thing if there were six other headphones in the mix? Now it's like shit. Really, you don't want to know where the problem came in, where I almost didn't buy? And this is not Apple's fault because it's not their products. The colors. I spent longer arguing with Natalie over the color of the damn things than buying the things. Almost to the point where I'll leave it. And do what a lot of people will do. I'll order them online. Now I had to order them online because they had my credit card on me or the phone on me with the passcode to my fucking credit card. So I had to go and order them online. But she did it there and then. I potentially would have forgot. So many of these situations the customers get into, it's, I've made the purchase decision, but now I have to choose between five or six different colors. That's where it got complicated. I made the purchase decision between 180 quid and 300 quid in less than 60 seconds. Less than 60 seconds. I spent 10 minutes arguing over the colors. I had a choice of one or two at this end where the money was made, where the money was getting handed over. But then you confused me, Dr. Dre, with the six different colors, <laughs> with the six different colors that I could have got. <laughs> now I'm struggling to argue with the guy because he's a billionaire. But, but that tells you a little bit about how people buy. Now they can borderline do it because it's a trendy, gratifying, looks good, feels good, says something about you, symbol and is a status and all that type of stuff, right? Everyone who's anyone is wearing them things these days from Conor McGregor to, um, who's the boxer I noticed him with you, um, Anthony Joshua, like anybody who's like current right now is wearing them. So like, you're gonna, happy to kind of have that mental dance with yourself a little bit because you're buying something that puts you into that bracket with them. That's how it works. But when it comes to health, my God, like, they'll spend more time deliberating over the beats and the color of the beats than they will their health. So we have to be very careful about the product. But back to the um, how you sell anything is how you sell everything. And I think that if we can nail and sit down in six months or this time next year and you show me after tomorrow when we go through all of these products and we work out how to sell them better, you show me that we're able to sell five to 10 of these year of cares, that we're able to sell eight pairs of orthotics every single month, that we're able to sell 1500 <coughs> quid's worth of upsell, then I'll go, all right, we have a process. We have an ability to sell. Now we can sell anything. Until we do, we're just chucking more confusion into the mix and we'll be guilty of becoming Dell and Microsoft and whoever else. That makes sense? Good, last one.
plan around it, haven't we? It's like a funnel, they call it, in marketing world, where you open up the eyeballs and the attention and you get people looking at it. And it's almost like a slippery slope that you take them on that is... Uh, here's the fun, here's the video, here's the competition, right? Done. I've, I've liked it and I've shared it. And then a second order consequence is that some people will go, oh, let me see who this company is. And then they, t they go over to the website, then they're in remarketing, and we've got their audience for Facebook or whatever. And then every now and again, they'll find a link of interest to them, then they will go on the website. So it does happen, but like the, it's like the other thing where it's like this page, it's like, yeah, we want you to go on the website, but if we just say go on the website, like they don't do it, you, you have to do it roundabout ways. in a roundabout way that makes them want to do it. Mm -hmm. The million dollar question for business owners is, how do I not get you to do it? It's how do I get you to want to do it? And when you look at it from that angle, everything becomes clear. How do I get you to, Paul, uh, we have the problem with drop offs. How, how do I stop it? What do I say? It's the wrong question. I can tell you what to say, but it doesn't mean that it'll work because everything that's happening before and after and the experience as they see it isn't right. So the question is, how do you get them to the point where they want to come for physio, where they don't want to cancel your session instead of the hairdresser or whatever it will be? Whether then you want to actually go and do the damn thing that you need to do, which most don't because it's hard work, is what needs to happen. It's much easier to go, tell me what to say. Amount of times you must get it on the call. What do we say when somebody says whatever? Here's a better question. How do you stop them getting to the point where they want to say that? Because it probably happened three weeks before. Well, does that mean I have to train the front? Yes, it does. Does that mean I have to change? Yes, it does. Does that mean I have to change? Yeah, damn right. Does that mean I have to fire that girl who keeps doing the thing that no matter if you give her the script, she won't fucking follow it anyway. Yes, it does. And so on and so on. So... We have to do and be creative, and I believe we can solve that tomorrow. The routine and the regimen is important, but again, here's what I know about this whole thing. It's like, yeah, we'll make it a priority. If this becomes a buzz in the clinic, and people come in and talk about it, and people talk about the prizes, and people are getting it, and you're all seeing it, you'll do the damn thing. Yeah. That's it. Like, that. that's it. It's like, again, it's like what has to happen for people to actually do things Unfortunately, most people need to see results before they do stuff or before they commit to it. And when they start to see results, it's like, shit, we have, we have to do that. <laughs> it's like when we first started all of the KPIs and whatever, so do we have to? Everyone's pushing back and I'm getting phone calls going, oh, everybody's worried and everybody thinks they're going to get this. And it's, it's not. It just gives us a better chance of being successful. Three months later when everybody can see it, oh, I get it now. So the painful point is getting across the bridge, the gap, the no man's land, the grey area of the unknown and doing the damn thing anyway. Same with social media. I have to do it whether we're going to be successful or not. It will work. We just haven't figured out the right way to make it work. That takes time. That takes time. But I do think we need to switch it to be bigger and more wow. We need to think, we need to be the equivalent of the, the car being given away on the radio where for months everybody's listening to it and like you want to be that person who gets the car like that's we've got to step up the prizes that we're giving away to make a splash on social so that people want to follow us so that they want to be in with a shot of winning whatever it is that that, that we do well that's the, the that's a, the wrong question we have to change the recruitment okay that's the better question got it see the difference we have to change the recruitment process cause and effect the effect is we have no physio <laughs> The pro what's the real problem? The problem is not that we haven't got a physio, a chartered physio. Yeah. The problem is the recruitment to find the chartered physios. Mm -hmm. Live your life from there and it's a different world. Mm. I know Jill's nicked that now, so sure. we'll just move on. <laughs> sure. <laughs> just on the well, to be fair, to be fair, the recruitment process worked. What has messed up is, is the learning that's consequence of, we, we made a detour to employ people from outside of the UK on purpose for various reasons and we believe that the recruitment was the right choice and I still think to the day it, it's the right person obviously what's materialized is the process behind the scenes that's largely out of our control for the mess up that's gone on with the CSP and the HPC or whatever has gone on so I don't actually know if again I'm going to be too critical on that I don't think we, we what we could have had was deal flow but we made a 
we made a B line. Sixty days, so we thought yeah. we could Correct. accommodate yeah. that. Yeah. 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 August. We, I made a rota to start in September. September. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we did. We did. I think at the time everything right, and we made then another conscious decision to go. Is she worth waiting for? Nothing to the day has made me think that she isn't. You know, a commitment and dedication has kind of come through. However, it is getting to the point where we can't. It's, a need, it's yeah. like beyond a bleeding. Like the artery is about to. Like there's no more blood left. Like the patient's about to die, and like we need to stop the bleeding severely quickly. And we do have a plan B that is already in play, I believe, mm -hmm. that will get us, will buy us an extra two weeks and then that's it. We have to draw a line under it from February the 1st, even if it's at the expense of the damn thing will come in on February the 2nd, but we can't, um, we can't keep going, yeah. you know, as is. So, so there we go. So again, for clarity on all of that, get clear on what the problems actually are. One that we don't know what our problems are. Mm -hmm. If we did, we wouldn't have any. <laughs> Simple as that. Therefore, what's the biggest skill you can get? Critical awareness of what your problems are. <coughs> Here's a good question. Um, if you didn't know what the problem was, what would it be? Not Sorry, say again. <laughs> <laughs> if you did know what the problem was, yeah, what would it be? Yeah. The cancellation form just needs to apply a tag that says stop sequence. It's one, it'll take 30 fucking seconds to do it. Even I could do it. God, it's yeah, like, talk about, that. like, if sometimes them it, guys just exactly. overanalyze. If, if that's what you're telling me is the problem, that when somebody, so you're saying the following sequence of emails that they get, so they ring up on a Monday yeah. at 2 o'clock, book an appointment, then cancel the next day. Mm -hmm. And they're still getting the three emails that say, you know, we're looking forward to seeing you, yada, yada. If that's all you want doing, that can be done at lunchtime. With no, our web form. No, that's already done. That's in place. That bit's in place. It's a process, so if someone cancels, they come form. back onto the... So we come back to the dashboard, you know what I'm saying? This person so will cancel and get, get in touch with them so they don't get lost. Yeah, so it's... it's it, you could do that. It's all it is, is um, however James creates the... It's the same thing, it's tag and, mm. tag and task. It's the web form that currently says, or, or this person has cancelled, that would send an email to them saying, thanks, your appointment's been cancelled. It would apply a tag to stop that sequence, yeah. and it would kick off some kind of task to go to a dashboard okay. that would show, um, it would be a safe search, mm. or however James does all of his searches, you know, the things that appear on their dashboard. Um, I guess it would be a safe search. It's a safe search that will say... Tag put on there. Uh, correct. And until yeah. that tag gets taken off, they stay in that thing. Yeah. It'll, it can be done in 40, 30 minutes. Right. Can we do that with you yeah. then? Because then you just have a... Well, so if they cancel and they come back, you just have a decision done and it says apply this tag if they're... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Books back on schedule. Yep, just run through the process. Do it, do it with Amy. Yeah. Don't need Ross for that. It's just, it's, it's again the manual, the manual element of somebody doing it. It will send them an email going, thanks, we've cancelled it. Um, it will send an email or a task to, to the desk, but it will also put it on the dashboard that says yeah. cancelled, needs to rebook. Um, we get that set up for DNA as well, we've already got it external. It goes through to the client as the, the email and things, but yes, yeah, an if external. You show, if someone sits in the interest... Web form, so web, same web form, can, so we call it cancellation slash DNA form, and there will be a drop down that says reason for cancelling, yeah. um, prior to the session or did not attend. <coughs> and it's the same thing, these people need to get back on um, on the list. So it's just a decision, Diamond. That, that needs a whole new level of communication, of reasoning, of scripting, of how can we get you back? Do we give them a bridge? Hey, you came in through the insurance company. Let's bring you back with to a, a free gift. This is genius. We'll bring this up tomorrow. Of that, how do we turn those current customers who are not buying from us into customers? It will be, a, I guarantee, a boost, a health boost voucher to come back or something. 50% off the first two sessions. Something that just easy. You can't take them from free to paid yeah. like that. You have to take them from free to bridge to then I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it'll be probably three sessions at half price, a voucher that we give them, or that they can buy, you know, they pay 10 pound for something. We'll figure out a commitment that, um, hey, listen, what we've got, you know, for any anyone who's been to see us in the past through a medical agency, uh, if you want to secure three sessions uh, for 50% off each session, it's just a small commitment of 10 pound right now. So it's 10 pound to buy three lots of half price sessions that you can use anytime. And it just builds a little bit of a bridge it is a little micro commitment and it turns them back into customers six, nine, 12 months down the line. They'll come back in for three and off we go. That's what we need to work on tomorrow. They get like a yeah. yellow, they come privately after being yeah. referred to us. That's, 
private patients are always going to be easier, I think, because they're like, they're, I mean, you're going to hit a lot of the insurance as well, but they're, they're, they're paying, aren't they? You know, they're coming in, they actually genuinely want to be there. Mm -hmm. But the insurance, I know, like, I mean, that's just something that's happening. But again, that's, a, that's why that moving them across the bridge, there'll still only be three or four out of ten and we can, but if we move them over, slowly turn them into a, 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 a tiny level of commitment for just ten pounds you can secure three sessions at half price or whatever for twenty five pounds you can secure three we, we'll think something to get them over the bridge we might have to play around with the prices a little on it and how but the concept of we can't take them from free to that level of income or that level of price straight away because they won't do it but if we put a bridge in the middle where they get comfortable paying for something that they never have paid for, it'll mean more mm -hmm. ascent. They're only put off by price if it's the, at the first time. What's the difference between... I'm so proud, I'm so not, proud of this. No, 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 you're right. And this is where we have to, because it's a very broad statement, that what's the difference in all of your lives between looking at a dress, a top, a TV, a couch, a, a car, that when you first glanced at it, it was too expensive. <coughs> then you bought it anywhere. What's the, what's the variable? What do you mean? So you look at something, mm -hmm. your initial, <laughs> never, never. Your initial look at something <gasps> this weekend, that's expensive. But then it's on your back a month later. Or it's in your hand or it's on your wall or whatever. Time. For most of the purchases, it's just time. It's sticker shock. It's, <gasps> I wasn't expecting that. And your brain at that point cannot do a calculation quick enough or fast enough to come to a logical conclusion that it's worth what it is. Doesn't mean that it can't. It means you haven't given it enough time. Therefore, pre-exposing them to the value, the price, the um, likely cost of coming back to us in six to 12 months is the best scenario. You almost want to tell them Hey, listen, uh, you know, you're getting this for, for free. Future prices are A, B, and C. And at first, their initial reaction is, oh, but their initial reaction a month later and two months later is, I'm comfortable with that. I understand that. I've heard that before. Yeah, I, I remember you said that. And at the time, it, it did seem a bit much. But three months later, now that I've been through the treatment and I've been able to match up what I'm getting against the price that you've told me, I'm starting to feel more comfortable with the price. It was never that I had no money, that I couldn't afford it, it's that I just wasn't expecting it. Why don't we play a different game, right? And this is, we're starting to get somewhere. So I agree wholeheartedly that for every 10, there are only three who probably would be a, a client or four. So the different game becomes every Wednesday, which one of the 10 new clients that came in through the medical agencies last week do we think are our ideal client? and you start to identify them as whoever, whoever they are. So instead of going, they're not, or most of them are not, we start to go, okay, change the question. Tell me which two or three do we think that we, they are? And we identify them while they're in play, while they're getting treatment, and we give them physical handwritten thank yous, gift vouchers, health boost vouchers, etc., to move them across. We will get significant boosts in profit if we start to look at it like that. What do you do? Do you only select the ones, obviously the ones that you don't think are going to be the kind of disregard well, them? If, if, uh, well, you, you're you playing it, still you still have the process, but we are identifying, instead of just generally going, they don't, which is, I agree, generally they don't, but it doesn't mean that they're all not. There's three or four, in, there's three in every ten who will be great customers. And if we can identify them with a better question, which is which one or who are you? Because we know you're there. We just have to sift through a little bit. So on a Wednesday, it could be, all right, we started 10 new clients last week on medical agencies. There was this, there was Steve, it was whoever. Which one of the three do we think, or which one of the tens do we think are our avatar? And how can we start that relationship with them of telling them from that free freebie to, to lifelong customer? Different question, you get different answers. It, it, it isn't a thing that we give to everybody, but it could be something that they get a little package while they're getting treatment that says, you know, this care will be, t hey, uh, Mr. Smith, this care is gonna be taken care of by your insurance company. Uh, we just wanted to let you know, we think you're a great fit for our clinic, and we think that you would be the absolute ideal patient we'd love to have coming to see us, you know, as the years goes on. They tell us that you love to play golf, we help people with golf injuries, you know, further down the line. Here's a gift voucher to be used any time in the next 12 months. Yeah, Boom. Perfect. That's how you reverse the process. That's how you stop looking at that lens and in the lens of the one that you that you want. Yeah. Yeah. That was good. Man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Cheers. Can I can I come with, can I come again? Okay, go on now. Yeah, Paul's contributed something. Don't down as well. Yeah. I'm writing it down. Don't get there. Paul's idea. Okay. Yeah. Paul shut up. Don't ask who isn't. Ask who is. Good. Anything else? Or are we going to have a little break? Yeah. Like that, Tomorrow we are going to book them in. Yeah. We are going to book out like the dates. We will strategize around when we think is appropriate times. Learning lessons of trying to do them too too fast, too soon. They need to be very strategic around times of year that we know when people are going to be free to come. We will nail in tomorrow and then Amy has a market and plan to go out. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Social media leading up to it. Case studies and testimonials need to be used better on social media. Um, put out on the Facebook and we're going to switch a lot of the, if you just raise that ad up, the, um, we're going to switch a lot of some of our ads this year to that, which is basically a testimonial. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So now the purpose of all those videos just was we just transcribe it. And just turn it into a story. Turn it into an ad. That's good. Goes is on the blog. No, that's just oh, all that like found. But oh. So even on Paul's weekends off in Leeds where he's, you know, <laughs> switching off from his day job yeah. he's actually like always thinking about you lot and trying to keep you all employed and you know while natalie starts sipping her prosecco <laughs> yours truly is scouring the back pages of the daily mail the express and whatever else looking for any opportunity that's what i do <laughs> it's a habit i can't switch off from it she's like do you never leave it alone i'm like no like does harry ever want to stop watching cbb's no so that's where we're going to move it towards, and we'll build a map all of that out um, in tomorrow. In tomorrow, where it's pinned into a calendar, and the the big marketing activities are, you know, danced around certain <coughs> times of the year, where historically we know uh, the busiest times of the year are going to be, or when people are. Uh, well, we're not going to do it in March, or maybe we are going to do it in March. We we'll look at that. You know, we need to look at um, the. This will be interesting because now we can start to go. When did we do the workshop last year and how it con con collided with the busiest times of the year? Yeah. When did we do our certain types of marketing activities and classes? We look back as we know when the bump of months were. Did that coincide? Did we do something in February that led to a big <coughs> month in March? Did we do something? Yeah. I would wager that it will. We'll find it. We'll <coughs> find it. Good. So everybody happy with that so far? Yeah. yeah. Right. So again, what you have to understand with all of that, there's some good stuff in there. How do we commit all of that? And that's where tomorrow I believe with the tactics of what are the things we're gonna change? How do these become routine? How do they become regimented? Um, we'll have a lot of ideas at the end of it and tomorrow we have to narrow them down to like, right, what's the like five or six things that made this whole day or two days worthwhile? Yeah. And that's probably one, mm -hmm. which as we identified, how do we get the, the, the start of the talk was, how do we get more from what we've already got? That's what we're, we're really probably gonna look at in 2018 is if we just add an extra 20%, to the revenue from what we've currently got, which is better internal referrals, better um, asking patients more for referrals, giving them incentives and so on. We can probably get a bump of a hundred grand from that alone, which is the, the breathing space. Build relationships with those agencies. Now we're gonna have the recruitment issue solved. We're on course for what should be a pretty cool, good yeah. So let's have a break and we'll come back with um, a SWOT analysis. We'll start again at 1.15. I should have got lunch and tomorrow we maybe should, but to be fair, I think it gives everybody just go and get some fresh air and go and have a walk. We'll come back at 1.15.